Hi, BookTube. BookTube, look, I need a break. I don't mean, you know, hang on, I shouldn't have said that because now you're all freaking out. I don't mean that kind of break, right? This is not a dramatic announcement. I, I'm just saying that I've just had a really unusually busy time since about the end of February. I, I did three different collaborative videos. You know, two of those were on my channel. One was on Polyglot Reading. And that was in addition to all the reviews that I prepared for the books that I read during March. And I did a little bit better than my usual in March. I read five books instead of my usual four. Okay. So I'm really in a position now where I need to do a tag video. And I haven't been tagged. And I know that's not essential. I mean, anybody can do a tag if they really, really want to. So I, I tried looking for a tag that appealed to me. I didn't really find one that I hadn't already done. So I decided it's time. It's time to invent another tag. And this will be my third tag creation. I'm going to link in my description box to my two previous tags, which were the outside the cover story tag and the iHeart booktube tag. Today's tag is going to go in a bit of a different direction, right? This tag needs uh, people to do some imagining. I can't see how readers wouldn't be good at that. Um, I want you to come up with your dream, your perfect fantasy of situations relating to books. And I'm interested in details here, lots of details, because we're not hampered by anything boring like reality, okay? I'm going to call this the In Your Wildest Dreams tag, and the questions are going to be down in my description box. Right, let's get started. Question one, describe your fantasy time and place for reading a book. Okay, here's mine. I am a morning person, but oddly enough, it's rare, it's very rare that I get the opportunity to read in the morning and I rarely get to be by myself in the morning, even though I love time by myself. So here's my fantasy. My fantasy would be to rent a place for a week and just stay there by myself. Ideally, I'd like a studio apartment in a city center, a city center with really good cafes, really good bookshops. So I'm already thinking Edinburgh. That's <laughs> rolling around in my mind. I would get some breakfast groceries delivered because I just, I love breakfast food. It's my favorite meal of the day. I would go get porridge oats and fresh fruit and uh, bread, good bread. I have a bread thing, everybody, just so you know. So it had to be like artisan bread, right? And some milk and some eggs. Uh, and, and then I would have my alarm set for each morning for half past five. Yeah. And then I'd get up and I'd brew some milky coffee in this in my yellow Yeti. I'd brew it. And then I would read all morning without getting out of my pajamas or dressing gown. Oh. And you might think, why do you want to be in the middle of a city? Why don't you want to be out in the country? You know, well, I tell you why. I really like traffic and people noise. It's great ambience for me for reading. But more than that, and this is selfish, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but it is. I would love to hear the sounds of everybody else having to get up and get to work and school and whatever, all the while knowing that at last, at last, I did not have to get up and get out and go anywhere or do anything. Now, I would read until noon, and then, you know, I'd get showered, get dressed, etc., and I'd go out for lunch. And then after lunch, I would browse in the bookstores, yeah, because this is all close by, right? And then I'd return to the apartment, and I don't know, watch a bit of booktube or write and, you know, have a bit of dinner and, and then get an early night. And as far as I'm concerned, that would be the most amazing week's holiday. Question two, describe your fantasy personal library. Now, maybe you've already got your fantasy personal library, but I doubt it somehow. I just think that all readers want either a completely different library or some modifications to the one that they already have if they could. So, here we go. Here's mine. I would love, ideally, a library in two parts, literally two separate rooms, but may, but interconnected by a door or something. And and the first room, the first half of that library would be would be pretty. I guess it would be decorated like a modern office, very light, very airy. Uh, there'd be a few fitted bookshelves, but I don't really want a lot of bookshelves in there. Just enough to make it look like a room for reading. The room's got to be large enough to accommodate two 
very good recliner chairs and footstools. And also there should be a desk and a chair. So there should be room for all that furniture and floor space. And one wall should be mainly windows because I need daylight. Daylight matters to me in any room that I'm reading in. And then the second half of this same library, this separate room, well, that would be like a vault. And I would want to keep that, you know, those high density cantilever bookshelves that you've got to turn a crank to move them away from each other and open up an aisle. Well, I'd want those in the other room. And that would allow me, you see, to keep the maximum number of books in the minimum amount of space, but also have, you know, something a little bit prettier because those shelves aren't pretty. Let's be honest. They're, they're pragmatic and practical. So I'd want a pragmatic and practical half for the storage of books and then a sort of more airy, open, beautiful space, space where I can record videos in and read in and write in that it's just it's got a better um, aesthetic. Let's put it that way, a better aesthetic. If I couldn't have that, my next fantasy would really be big. I'd need like stupid amounts of space. I'd need like a gymnasium sized space. And at the ground level, that's where I'd have lots of windows and maybe a few decorative bookshelves and all the furniture I want. And then what I'd have is a mezzanine level with a broad walkway. And that mezzanine level would be accessible via an elevator. And that's where all my bookshelves would be. They'd be all around at least three of the four walls because I'd, I'd probably want one wall to be, again, mainly letting in natural light. But at least three of those four walls, I want to be lined with bookcases. And then I could just go along my walkway. Maybe I'd have some kind of special, uh, I don't know, what would you, like a hydraulic lift to take me up to the upper shelves. I'd love that. That would be really cool. That I could wheel around, you know, and then fix in one place and then get on it and kind of be carried up to the top shelf so I could have a look at what's there when I want to browse. That would be my second fantasy library. So there, everybody, have a go and beat that. <laughs> Question three, imagine that you are going to build and run a bookshop, okay? Right, tell me about the design of this bookshop. Tell me how you want the layout to be. And, and would you sell new or secondhand books? And, and what would you call the shop? That would be important. And would it sell anything else besides books? Okay, now if I could build a bookshop, one thing I really wish bookshops often had, which they, they don't always, is especially secondhand bookshops, by the way, is more floor space. So I would love to make a building that was some kind of polygon shape, octagon or decadohedron or something. And, and I'd have the tills and then all the staffing areas right in the center of the space. And then around that would be a, a broad circular walkway, the main traffic area. And then out towards the sides of this polygon, that's where I'd have my shelving for the different categories of books and some seating for people who were who were browsing and wanting to read a bit. I might even call it Polygon Books, but mm, see, that might lead people to think I was just uh, stocking technical, scientific, and you know, I would want something quite broad in its scope. Uh, definitely it'd be secondhand books. I really like that. So what I would also love to call the shop, if I could, is a robberous books, you know, the, after the mythical snake that is eating its own tail, because that always suggests to me cyclicalness, things coming back around, recycling, repurposing, and I think that's perfect for a secondhand bookshop. Now, since we're in the realm of fantasy, I think it'd be cool if somewhere in this shop, I also had a space that was like a coffee shop, but also a book exchange, so that let's say you can't really afford a book right now. And okay, maybe you can afford a cup of coffee, although my books I'd like to think would be pretty cheap. So a cup of coffee and a book might be the same price. But nevertheless, if you if you didn't want to buy a book, maybe you, you just want to take a book, read it and bring it back. I'd have some kind of exchange space for that because I, I like that idea. I have no idea whether this is a viable business plan. And I want to stress, we're talking dreams here, wildest dreams. So for the purposes of this tag, everybody, I don't want you to hold back just because you suspect that your fantasy bookshop might never be solvent. Question four. Question four, is, it's not exactly fantasy. It's got a little element of it. Let's see how we go. I need you to name one person who's not a booktube creator, right? That's important. One person with whom you can have a good conversation about books. Now, if you don't know a person like this, who do you know that you wish would become a reader because you'd really love to speak with them and discuss books? 
Okay, for me, the person I'm thinking of is called, well, I'm going to call her Suzanne, okay? Suzanne no longer lives in the same town that I do, but when she did, we attended the same book group that I used to go to. Uh, that group met in the lounge of a hotel, which has since closed down. I, I, I don't think that was because of us. <laughs> Suzanne was a full-time librarian and one of the few people in that book group uh, who, in addition to myself, actually read most of the books that the group chose to read. <sighs> it was pretty hit and miss with the rest of the members. And that was the problem. That was the ironic thing, was that Suzanne and I, we never got to talk much about the book group books because we would just bore everybody else who hadn't done the reading, right? It's weird. That, that, to me, that's the weird thing about some face-to-face -face book groups. They actually end up being like social groups where sometimes some reading maybe happens. And I don't know, that's the reason I went looking for book two because I just thought, oh, you know, I need to find readers like me, readers who will get themselves through a book so that they have something to say at the end. Um, I don't know if Suzanne knows about book two. So, you know, I might actually open up my Facebook account. Now, I don't do that often. Facebook, I don't look at it anymore. haven't looked at it for years. I just go in there to look people up and then send them private messages. So um, I'm going to see if I can find her and then I can invite her to my channel. Now, regarding a person you wish would become a reader, uh, I'm close to that. The person who watches television is a reader. They, they like a very specific types of books, but they are a reader and they do have good opinions about what they read. And I've been quietly, indirectly trying to persuade them to contribute an opinion. They don't really want to come on camera, but I've sort of used as, as an example, Roy Reads Anything, his channel, because Dr. Jenny doesn't come on camera, but she does have things to say. So I, I keep hoping that maybe another year, if I just keep persuading and persuading, I might get the person who watches television to contribute an opinion about books. That would make me quite happy. Question five, last question. If you won a million dollars, and I'll just back up here and say that could be a million anything, right? Yen, pounds, euros, whatever currency you would be able to spend easiest, okay? So you've got this money, but you can only spend it on books or book-related items. How would you spend that money? This was a tricky one for me, okay? My first impulse, of course, was buy a bigger house so I can put more books in it. But, you know, a bigger house is more work. So that means less time to read. If I stay where I am, I would not buy a lot of physical books because I don't have space for them. I would probably buy a fair number of ebooks and I'd probably treat myself to one of those cool e reader combination notepad things. You know, I can't remember the Kindle one, but there's, there's one made by a company called Books and one by Remarkable. So I'd shop around, pick one of those. But after that, what I'd probably do is spend the money traveling across the county border into Cambridgeshire, where the libraries are bigger and they're better funded. Cambridgeshire allows residents from bordering counties to take out a library card. So I would become a registered borrower and I would get more books that way. And I would like also to donate some of my money to our local library in the town where I live, a fund that they can draw on, just a, a slush fund to cover maintenance costs maybe, or costs associated with holding events. The person who watches television volunteers in the library and he tells me that they could really use some money to hire a manager. And that's because the workload that falls on the more experienced volunteers, it gets, gets quite demanding. And most of the volunteers are in their 70s. The manager would provide continuity, but also they'd ensure that you didn't get a few volunteers getting overworked. And that is the tag done. It's that easy. Now, who am I going to tag? Well, I think I didn't make good judgment with my first and the second tags that I created. I didn't tag enough people. And if you only tag like two or three people, well, they could be doing something else. You know, life is hectic, isn't it? So I did something completely different now. So I won't read out on, on camera who I've tagged, but in my description box, I think I've picked about 20, 25 different people just to try and get this tag going, get it underway if possible. Cause I'm sure that people like, everybody likes a bit of fantasy work, don't they? <laughs> Can't be just me. Right. What I'm going to do now is get back to my normally scheduled content, everybody. That's what you're going to see, right? This was just a little break. Thank you very much for it. And I'm going to carry on as normal. I hope you guys are all having a great time reading. Hope you're enjoying the sunshine that certainly in the UK here is finally coming out. I'm so glad. 
Look forward to seeing you again soon, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.